Cool. Um, nice to meet everyone. Thanks for having us. Um, we're excited to be a part of the summit and appreciate everyone's time today. Um, as Pedro said, we'll be talking to you about five trans airflow provider and then how we leverage the provider in our data pipelines at at recharge. And so each of us will give a little bit more info about ourselves when we get to our sections, but I did want to formally introduce everyone on the front end. So first we have Nick Acosta. He is a developer advocate on the Fivetran team who works closely on the Fivetran Airflow provider. Um, and then we've got Spencer Weeks as well as myself, Annie Kaufman, um, and we're both data engineers at Recharge. And we're excited to share a bit about how we work in Airflow and leverage the Fivetran provider specifically. Um, so quick agenda of what we'll be talking about. Uh, first, we'll have Nick give a brief introduction to Fivetran, as well as some historical context on the Fivetran provider. Then you'll hear from Spencer, who's going to give a bit of context about Recharge, our tech stack, and our data team. And then finally, I'll spend most of the time here talking about how we leveraged the Airflow provider and built on top of it in order to orchestrate some of the core components of our data pipeline in Airflow. So I'll hand it off to Nick to get us started. Thanks, Annie. So my name is Nick Acosta, and I'm a developer advocate at Fivetran. If you're unfamiliar with Fivetran, Fivetran provides automated data ingestion via built connectors from many sources into a variety of data warehouse destinations to power your data movement with automation, scale, and security. I'm happy to say that this is Fivetran's second year sponsoring Airflow Summit. Last February, we built the Fivetran Airflow provider to bring its automated data ingestion to Airflow developers. I introduced the Airflow, the Fivetran Airflow provider and discussed how and why uh, to use it at last summer's Airflow Summit. Uh, and a recording is linked on this slide or really easy to find. Uh, but since then, uh, over 103 uh, different organizations have managed over 600 data pipelines with the provider, moving over 12 and a half billion rows of data uh, through Fivetran in Airflow, including Recharge. Uh, but before I hand it off to them, I wanted to let everyone know about some new developments with our provider. We're currently working with Astronomer to add asynchronous functionality via deferred sensor. If you'd like to know more about deferred operators and sensors, uh, there's a session on deferred operators and sensors uh, last night at the summit, and there is another one tomorrow night, I believe, as well. Uh, basically, a deferred sensor will monitor five trans status asynchronously, allowing Airfor Airflow to perform other tasks uh, as it waits. I'm really looking forward to getting that out soon. Uh, but in the meantime, let's hear from Spencer and Annie on how Recharge is using Airflow. Thanks, Nick. Uh, yeah, so first off, what is Recharge? Uh, we are the leading subscription management solution, uh, helping e-commerce merchants of all sizes launch and scale subscription offerings. Um, and that's really true, like of all sizes. We see some extremely large merchants and some very small merchants. Um, but we allow them to offer subscriptions. Um, we have over 15,000 merchants, uh, 50 million subscribers, over 200 countries. Um, we've processed over 10 billion in transactions. Uh, we're also a remote first company um, with over 500 uh, employees across 15 countries. So I'm coming to you from a Starbucks in Boston because I travel full time. Um, and internet at my campsite is unreliable. So um, yeah, what drew me to Recharge personally is uh, a chance to work on embedded analytics. Um, we use Looker to power those, but uh, yeah, I, want, I wanted to work on analytics that were loading in an app and presented to our customers um, and Recharge gave me that opportunity. So um, I've been here a little over two years and I've been acting as our data engineering tech lead for the last about 12 months or so. Uh, so our current team, there are seven data engineers, 12 analysts, and three data scientists. Uh, we use Snowflake as our main data warehouse. Uh, we use Snowpipe, and we're excited to try out Snowpark now that it supports Python. Uh, we have Looker, as I mentioned, and that powers our embedded analytics, as well as some internal uh, business intelligence reporting that we're doing. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of DBT. We're using the open source version um, and data in engineering manages a Docker image 
um, for consistency across any machine or place where DBT is being used. Um, and about 15 months ago, we rolled out Fivetran to replace Matillion. Uh, we found that Fivetran was just a great off-the-shelf off solution that played nicely with our um, tools and works really well with Snowflake. We've also found that uh, the partnership between us has been very collaborative and responsive. Um, on new features, they ask for feedback. We've met with quite a few of their product managers to um, provide our experience using uh, their features. And we've really enjoyed uh, being able to rely on them for all of our extraction. Uh, we are a GCP shop. So we're using tools like Dataflow, PubSub, uh, Cloud Functions, and Cloud Storage. Um, and then with Airflow specifically, um, we started using Astronomer. Um, when we first needed an orchestration tool, we were told by our DevOps team to like self-serve and um, figure something out. So Astronomer allowed me as a data engineer to spin up Airflow. It was completely managed and everything was taken care of. Uh, eventually we did shift over to Composer V1 um, within GCP and we are in the process of migrating to Composer V2. Um, Astronomer has since rolled out some GCP support with their cloud offering. Uh, so it's definitely a compelling offering. Uh, something within Airflow, obviously using providers, it's a lot like finding a reliable Python library to reuse and build on top of. Um, so Annie's gonna go into that a little bit more in this presentation. Um, but we also do use Terraform and we already use it today for everything in Google Cloud and we're rolling it out for Snowflake um, and looking into providers for both Fivetran and Looker as well. Um, so I've been working with Annie since I started. Originally she was an analyst and she's since uh, transitioned over to the data engineering side. So I'll hand it off to her. Engineer at Recharge. Um, I work closely with Spencer on our data pipelines. Um, I'm based in LA and I've been working remotely at Recharge for about three and a half years now. Uh, as Spencer mentioned, I did come in as a data analyst and I worked as a data analyst for about two years before moving over to data engineering. Um, so I've been in working as a data engineer for a little over a year, uh, but still feel pretty green, but that probably will never change. Um, and then, so today we're going to talk about the Fivetran Airflow provider and how we use it at Recharge. Before I dive in, I wanted to share a brief outline of what I'm planning to go over just to stay organized. So first, I'll give an overview of what a Fivetran connector is. And this is a core concept for any conversation about the provider itself. And then I'm also gonna show you how Fivetran connectors are traditionally scheduled in the Fivetran UI. Um, then I'll talk about the benefits of orchestrating a connector in Airflow instead. Um, after that, I'll dive into the Fivetran provider specifically, and I'll be showing you a very simple, basic use case of the provider. And then I'll show you how we built on top of the provider for, for our needs at Recharge. And then lastly, I'm gonna share some of our future plans for our use of the provider. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and jump in. So as Nick mentioned, Fivetran is a data integration service and a connector object is what we set up in Fivetran in order to sync source data to a target destination. So in other words, a Fivetran connector reaches out to a source, receives data from it, and then writes it to a destination. Uh, the image on the slide is a partial view of the connector section in Recharge's Fivetran dashboard. And this is where we can see and access all of our connectors as well as set up new ones. Right now we've got about 20 active connectors, but that figure is always growing as we add new sources and also even break out some of our existing connectors into smaller connectors to get more granular with our data syncing. So what I'm gonna show you today is how we're leveraging Airflow and the Fivetran provider to orchestrate and manage the data syncs across our Fivetran connectors, like the ones that you see here on the screen. Um, before I jump into the scheduling and some of our limitations, I uh, wanted to call out, so Fivetran helps a wide trend of organizations manage their data uh, right out of the box. 
It comes with ready to use connectors and you can do everything you need to in the Fivetran UI with no coding required. Um, unavoidably with tools like this, there are trade-offs. Um, so when you need more control than all of the control that Fivetran gives you, the only real solution is to build the whole thing yourself. Um, but obviously this is a super heavy lift, takes a lot of time and specialized resources, and then the solution needs to be actively maintained. So for recharge, Fivetran does more than enough to meet our needs and it fits right into our tech stack. Um, and then between the Fivetran API and the Airflow provider, it's been made even better for some of the custom things we wanna do. So one of the easy things that you can do in Fivetran right out of the box is set up a connector. Uh, this is done in the UI. It normally only takes like a couple of minutes. When you set up a connector, by default, the schedule is managed by Fivetran. Um, on the slide, you'll see an example of the setup for a connector that is scheduled in Fivetran. In the blue box, you can see where you select a sync frequency to indicate when Fivetran should initiate syncs on this connector. Um, and so as you can see, we are presented with a handful of discrete options for a sync fre frequency. Um, and with these options, we are pretty limited in the scheduling abilities that we have here on the connector. Um, one additional limitation of scheduling in Fivetran uh, that we found is around alerting. Outside of some basic notification preferences, we rely on Fivetran's kind of built-in backend alerting functionality. And so because of this, we are dependent on Fivetran's opinion for things like what or warnings and errors should we be alerted on, what's included in an alert message, when is a sync considered to be long running, things like that. And so for us, the main issue here is not that we actually disagree with Fivetran's opinions on these things, but more that we don't have control over the alerting behavior on our side. Um, that's something that we'd ideally be able to kind of control more, more specifically. And so the next item I have here, I wouldn't describe it as a limitation per se, um, but all it takes is a click of the button in the UI to adjust the schedule in the scenario where a connector is, syncs are managed in Fivetran. Um, and so this is great when you need to make a quick change. However, this also means that anyone with proper permissions can go and change the scheduling without any review or, or guardrails. And then finally, at Recharge, we intend to have all components of our data pipelines orchestrated in Airflow in the ideally near future. Um, and so with connectors scheduled in Fivetran, we're still stuck in the position of having different components in different places um, in terms of scheduling. And this is, this is not ideal for uh, many reasons. Um, for one, it makes monitoring more difficult, maintenance is heavier and future development can be more tedious. And additionally, it can be difficult and sometimes impossible for us to explicitly link dependencies of these jobs that are running in different places. So how do we work around these things? Uh, the answer for us is airflow orchestration. Um, so main point I wanna make here is that airflow orchestration removes many of the limitations that we see when we're scheduling a connector in Fivetran. Um, so for each of the negatives that I called out on the previous slide, we've got a positive here that was unlocked when we began orchestrating the connectors in airflow. Um, so first we've got increased flexibility in our scheduling. As I'm sure everyone here knows in Airflow, the schedule interval DAG argument receives either a cron expression or time delta object. So with this, we can get more granular and particular for our sync scheduling across our connectors. Um, on the slide here, you can see a snippet of the DAG code that we use. Um, and so we're leveraging a cron expression, which allows for, the schedule, for scheduling that is absolute and stateless. And that's exactly what we want. Um, in addition to the scheduling, we also have increased control over alerting and the ability to create some custom alerting. Um, we can define airflow settings and DAG arguments like SLAs and execution timeouts to apply some basic alerting. At Recharge, we've also created custom alerting through a Python function that is called by a task in our DAGs um, here, and I'll elaborate on that a bit later. Um, and then additionally, um, with moving into Airflow, this means that our Fivetran connector scheduling is code-based. So again, this is kind of neutral. It's more of a paradigm shift um, and not necessarily a benefit depending on the use case. But for us now, when someone wants to change the connector scheduling, um, they make a code change, push up a merge request to be reviewed by another person on our team. 
And in this way, it ensures that we're able to get a second set of eyes on these changes. However, the trade-off is this does mean that scheduling changes can, can take more time than when they were at the click of a button. And then lastly, with managing our connector syncs and airflow, we're closer to having that unified place where all of our jobs, data pipeline jobs are scheduled, um, which would allow for easier monitoring and maintenance. Additional development is simpler. And lastly, when we're in that setup, it will be easier for us to explicitly link dependencies. Um, so those are some of the benefits of syncing our connectors uh, through an Airflow DAG, but how do we actually implement it? Um, for us at Recharge, the answer is by leveraging the Airflow provider, the Fivetran Airflow provider. And so um, bringing it back a bit, what is a provider? Uh, providers are packages that allow us to extend core airflow capabilities. So the Fivetran provider is a package from Fivetran and Astronomer that enables connector uh, management in airflow. In the Fivetran provider, you've got both an operator and a sensor to work with. So the Fivetran operator receives a connector ID and confirms that it exists. It then adjusts the connector so that it runs on a schedule defined by Airflow and not by Fivetran. And then finally, it calls for their start of a sync on that connector. Then you've got the Fivetran sensor, which monitors the status of a connector, and it allows the DAG to progress when data has completed syncing into the destination warehouse. So like other Airflow providers, this provider is open source. It's also actively maintained by Nick's team at Fivetran. So this means that we can benefit from Nick's team and other developers who might push modifications to the provider to improve upon it. Um, it also means that as Fivetran's core product or API changes, they'll adapt this provider to accommodate. And so on our side, all that we'll have to do is stay up to date with the latest versions of the provider. So now first I'm gonna show you a basic implementation of the Fivetran provider. And then from there, I'm gonna show you how we built out on top of it. So here's a quick look at a basic use case. Um, as you can see, we've got two tasks here. First, a task which executes a Fivetran operator to trigger a connector sync. Once that completes successfully, the next task executes a Fivetran sensor, which monitors the connector until syncing is complete. This is a super simple DAG that does successfully manage a connector sinks. Um, however, we found ourselves building on top of this in order to address some behavior that we saw, which I'll describe a little bit more about later, and also to just allow ourselves to feel a little bit more confident in our connector syncing. So that brings me to the recharge use case. Um, here's a graph view of a DAG that we use to sync one of our Fivetran connectors. Um, as you can see, we've got more going on here than what you saw in the simple use case. I'm gonna start by describing exactly what's going on in this DAG, and then in the next few slides, I'll tell you more about why we've built it out this way. Um, so diving into this DAG, on the front end, first we've got a dummy task just indicating the start of a DAG. Uh, then we've got a task called connector config. Uh, this task pulls the internal Fivetran connector ID based on a recognizable connector name and based on the environment in which the code is running. It pushes the results to XCOM keys to be used in the next task. And so this task allows us to apply handling such that when this DAG runs in our staging environment, it hits a test connector and triggers syncs on a test connector. And then when this DAG runs in our production environment, it hits our production connector. And so the next task in this DAG is called check connector status. Uh, this checks the current status on, a, on the given connector ID. And the main statuses that we'll see are paused, syncing, and scheduled. So paused and syncing are pretty straightforward. Um, scheduled means that the connector is waiting for the next sync to be run and it's ready for the next sync. So we then branch based on the status that we observe. Um, if a connector is paused or already syncing, no sync is triggered and we follow the bottom branch in the graph view. If a connector has any other status besides syncing or paused, um, we'll follow the top branch and we'll try to trigger a sync. So for most DAG runs, we expect the top path, the top branch to be followed. Um, and here we then use the five tran operator and sensor to trigger a sync and then monitor it to completion. After this, we call a function to update the value on a counter and to run a check. And I'll talk more about that a little bit later. 
And then for some DAG runs, however, we will follow the bottom branch. And again, this happens when a connector is syncing or paused at the time that the DAG runs and then tries to trigger another sync. So in this branch, we do not trigger a sync on the connector. Um, we do update a counter and run a check, and then we allow the DAG to complete successfully. So yeah, you're probably wondering why we're doing some of these things instead of leveraging a more simple structure like what we saw earlier. And that brings me to my next slide. Um, so before we moved our connector syncing into Airflow, we, we wanted to do some testing to confirm the behavior of the Fivetran operator and sensor in scenarios that we've seen impact our syncing in the past. Um, so one of these considerations that we had was what happens if someone pauses a connector in the UI? Uh, in the screenshot on the slide, we're looking in the Fivetran UI at one of our connectors that does have its schedule managed in Airflow. And so you'll see a blue toggle in the top right. And to pause and turn off a connector, you just simply click that toggle. So we wanted to test what happens if a connector is paused between syncs or in the middle of a sync while the syncs are man managed in Airflow. Um, what we saw was, in both scenarios, the five train operator completes successfully, and then the sensor runs endlessly. Uh, so this hogs our worker resources. Um, if a connector is paused in the UI, there's not necessarily an issue with anything or with the connector. So what we decided to do was apply branching logic to have the DAG complete successfully and just not actually trigger a sync in this scenario where the connector is paused. Um, the next two considerations are kind of hand in hand. We've got long running syncs, which leads us to attempt overlapping syncs. Um, and so when the connector is actively syncing already and you execute, uh, execute a Fivetran operator and sensor on it plainly, the operator will complete successfully without actually having kicked off a new sync. And then subsequently the sensor will monitor that previous sync that was already running on the connector to completion. So, once the sensor ends, it would look like the DAG successfully triggered and finished a new sync in that DAG run. However, again, it didn't actually trigger a sync here. And so it's, it's both a bit confusing and also it does kind of waste some of our resources since we're not actually doing anything, but we are polling for that time. Um, like the scenario where the connectors pause, when the connector is already syncing, we decided to do the same thing, exit the DAG successfully without actually triggering a sync. So the next two considerations I have on here are around schema changes, both within the Fivetran connector, as well as on the source data itself. Each of these things can affect sync behavior. Um, I don't have time to get really in the weeds on these ones, but these are additional things that we tested and that led us to the branching and the alerting strategy that we ended up implementing here. So alerting is the next thing I wanna talk about a bit here. Um, with the connectors orchestrated in Airflow, again, we've now got more control. Uh, we've got some basic SLAs applied on the DAG to send an email in the event that the DAG run takes longer than expected. And so we're able to set this SLA on our side rather than relying on five trans determination for, for a long running sync. Um, we also have execution timeout to control the maximum permissible runtime. If either of these are violated, an email is triggered and also a pager duty will go off to our team. Additionally, what I think is a little more interesting is, is our custom alerting. So after all that testing that we did and the branching strategy uh, that you can see here again at the bottom of this slide, um, we wanted to apply some custom alerting. And so as I described, when the DAG runs without triggering a sync on the connector, we might not have an actual issue. So we didn't wanna create noise by alerting every time when this happens. But that said, if a DAG continues to run over and over again without actually syncing anything or triggering a sync on the connector, we do eventually need someone to go have a look and make sure there's not a bigger problem and take action to stop it. Because we don't want to continue to run a DAG when it's not actually doing anything. So in order to get eyes on a DAG when this behavior is observed, um, we built out some custom alerting. and. We decided that in the event where there's a certain amount of consecutive DAG runs without a sync, we want to trigger a warning email. And we're specifically interested in consecutive DAG runs with no sync. Oftentimes, the non-sync DAG runs are intermittent, and a subsequent run triggers a new sync with, with no issue. So to create this specific alerting, we're actually using counters that are maintained on a table in our data warehouse. Um, and so each time the DAG runs and there's no sync, 
the corresponding counter is incremented by one by making an update to that snowflake table. Uh, when the DAG successfully triggers a sync, the counter is updated back down to zero. So as soon as that counter hits a certain value indicating that there have been that many DAG runs without a sync, then a warning email is triggered indicating that the DAG is not syncing and, and needs attention. Um, we're currently set up to warn after five instances of this, but it's something we can easily adjust. And this custom alerting is built out within a Python function that lives in our Airflow code. It's called in a task at the end of each branch in our DAG, like you can see here again in the graph view. Um, and so in general, this alerting allows us to feel a lot more confident in our, in our data syncing. Um, I did wanna take some time and call out a couple nuances. Uh, these are related to the to Fivetran's core product as much as they are related to the provider itself. Um, we've discussed these with Fivetran as feedback for them to consider in, in future feature development. Uh, so one piece, firstly, both the Fivetran operator and sensor are at the connector level. So the operator triggers a sync on a connector and the sensor checks a connector for certain criteria. So in other words, we're tracking an overall connector and, and not a specific sync. And this leads to a lot of the behavior that we saw in our testing. So a, me a more ideal state for us at Recharge would be if Fivetran took kind of like a jobs-like approach to the syncs, where the syncs are jobs with unique IDs that we can individually track. Um, the operator could return a sync ID corresponding to the specific sync that it triggered. The sync ID could then get passed through XCOMs to the sensor which would monitor that specific sync to completion. Um, and this brings me to my next nuance. Uh, the intended use for the Fivetran provider involves executing the operator and then a sensor, both on the same connector. However, sometimes our data syncs can be so quick that they actually fully complete before the sensor is able to make its initial poke to check the status on a connector. So this causes the sensor to continue to the ping the ping the connector until the next sync starts and completes. At that point, the sensor finally meets its criteria and the DAG continues. Um, obviously, this isn't super ideal as it makes it look like the initial sync ran long and overlapped with the subsequent sync when in fact it actually didn't. Um, in reality, a uh, sync was triggered and completed. It was just very quick. Cool. So moving on to my last slide, uh, I wanted to briefly mention some of our future plans to further improve um, how we manage five trans connectors in Airflow. So the first thing we wanna do really um, as soon as possible is make adjustments so, we, so that we're not hogging a worker for the entire duration of the five trans sensor task. So as we bring more into Airflow, we're gonna have many DAGs with the sensor pulling our connectors. Um, as Nick mentioned, he's working to make the five trans sensor into a deferrable sensor. Uh, you can see a graphic on the slide from Astronomer that is comparing standard operators and deferrable operators. Candidly, I'm not super familiar with deferrable operators yet on my side. Um, also, we're using Airflow 2.1, where I do not believe they're supported. Uh, but like Nick said, there's a couple presentations about them at the summit. So definitely check those out if you're curious. But um, in general, with deferred operators, worker slots can be released while polling for the status of a uh, job on an external system. So this would free up our worker resources and allow us to utilize those resources more, more effectively. Um, in lieu of a deferrable operator, we've also considered adjusting the sensor to run in reschedule mode. When in reschedule mode, uh, the sensor task frees the worker slot when the criteria is not yet met and it's rescheduled for a later time. So we haven't adjusted this yet, but only because we would wanna do uh, some additional testing before we implement, but it hopefully we'll be able to leverage a deferred sensor instead. Um, and then another thing we'll look to do in the near future here is to leverage dynamic DAG generation. Um, our set, right now, our separate DAG syncing each of our connectors, they look exactly the same outside of the relevant connector ID. So every time we move a connector into Airflow right now, we copy and paste the DAG code adjust the connector parameter, and then we're all set. Um, and it's great that we've got a pattern that we're able to quickly and easily replicate here. Um, however, these DAGs are also perfect candidates to be generated dynamically as they do the same thing with just that parameter changing between them, um, which in this case is the connector ID. And then finally, with connector syncs and airflow, we plan to explicitly link the dependent data transformation jobs and further streamline our pipeline. Um, 
we're not like exactly sure what this is going to look like for us yet. Like what's going to be within one DAG, what's going to be across DAGs. But with everything in Airflow, um, we're in a much better place to, to link these dependencies. And that's all I have today. Hopefully that was interesting. Um, if anyone has questions or comments, I think we might be kind of at time, but we'd love to continue the convo. Um, we've got our emails on the slide and we're also all active in the Airflow Slack. So thank you.